Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. It's the Friday before the weekend, before the Jays have to take on the Yankees. And I think after all the grumbling and complaining, cooler heads have prevailed. We can actually have somewhat of an actual discussion now. We're going to get into everything next. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. But Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Carter, it is a Friday, and I'm trying to be happy and in a good mood, but the way this team was playing, I'm not so much. I'm trying to let cooler heads prevail, as I said, and you know, I think the rest of the fans are as well. It's still early in the season. There's a lot of room to improve and work and battle our way back, but it wasn't the best start to the 2024 season for the Toronto Blue Jays. The bats need to be woken up. There's a ton that needs to be fixed. Carter, where do you want to start to fix this Blue Jays team? Well, looking at yesterday, I feel like overall it was a pretty negative podcast, but it was definitely warranted when you have a game in game one where you get no hitter by a guy making his eighth professional start in, ML, in his MLB career. And then you have a game three where you get one Dalton Varsho hit. that I don't even think it was that good of an at-bat, kind of just shot it the other way. It was it was rightfully for the fan base to be this mad. You're getting historically low uh, a start to the season offensively. And when you had the same problem as last season, definitely uh, the fans are right to be mad about the situation. But then again, when you got to take a step back and you got to look at where the Blue Jays are, you do see like it, we had the right to be mad, but we are three and four. We played two pretty good teams, two teams that are definitely going to be fighting for the playoffs. And things can only really get better from here because of how bad this series was. And I'm just going to go into one uh, tweet I have from Sportsnet stats here. And it says the Blue Jays set franchise records with the fewest hits, nine and batting average with a 0.106 in a three game series. Previous, previous lows were 10 hits and a one point or sorry, a 0.112 average in a three game set versus the Red Sox from a series from 1978. So this offense has not been this bad in over 45 years. God forbid if this would keep up, the Blue Jays would have the worst season in MLB history. We'd have Bradley Zimmer numbers across the board. That would be a funny season to watch, but holy would it get boring quickly. So it can, things can only get go up from here. The worst offensive start in that series in the last 45 years. You get the Yankees, it doesn't get a whole lot easier, but you got to hope for some offensive power from this lineup. We are good on paper. We do have the stars on paper, and we have seen – uh, this offense boom in the past, just need more consistency, just need different approaches. And I'll get into that a little bit later on uh, in this segment. But yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing that I'm taking away is maybe I was overreacting a little bit as well, but it's tough not to overreact. You see all these offensive stats. I hate to be this guy, but it is still early in the year. You got to give this team a little bit more than seven games to prove themselves. And I think my biggest takeaway is we got to unfortunately lay back on the Toronto Blue Jays a little bit as hard as that is going to be. It is still early on in the season. Things aren't looking great, but things have to get better. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer before I completely throw this season, Jay season out to waste. Yeah. And I'm not throwing this out, out to the dumpster either. Um, but yeah, I'm upset just like everybody else I think is upset because they came in with high hopes and, and the high hopes isn't that this team needs to be a world series championship team this year. We just need to fix the problems as last year and look like we're moving forward. And so far, this looks like a worse version of last year's team. And especially, we talk about managing decisions all offseason, and we come into this season having the same, same problems. The same choices not being made. Yes, we've left in some pitchers. Great. We learned from those mistakes. That's good. But when we're not playing, like we've talked about riding the hot hand of David Schneider, Ernie Clement, and not doing that, it's like those things that just should be a natural fit, a natural placement, aren't isn't happening with John Schneider. And maybe this is starting to show that maybe he's not our guy. 
maybe this isn't our guy. As much as I hate to say that because I think the players really like him. He seems like a, he has a good attitude towards the game. Um, and, and just as a personality-wise, he's got a great personality. But there's been mistakes, and there's been a plenty and plenty of mistakes. And then him trying to back his mistakes or taking the fall for these mistakes. And last year, I don't fully believe that it was just on him either. Um, but this year, not starting Ernie and Davis uh, into that third game against the Astros was just crazy just criminal to me. I, I really don't understand it. Um, we had got a bunch of comments and stuff from you guys. So we will get into those in the third segment, just because we, I found a lot of funny. It was, you guys blew up the comment section. So we wanted to, you know, share a couple of those, get uh, some of our reactions to some of the ones we haven't quite read yet. Um, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, Braden five, Wasco Carter first too, as well as our TikTok and Instagram page at locked on blue Jays and subscribe to us because we notice a lot of you guys aren't subscribed that are watching the videos. Carter, when I when I'm talking about all these managerial decisions, is this something that I should even be considering looking at in the first after the first seven games of this season in your mind? I think 100% it is. I think that's a problem. That's the biggest problem that I have with this Toronto Blue Jays team is that I'm trying not to overreact. I'm trying not to uh, be too negative on this podcast and get uh, too worried too quickly. But then you're looking at John Schneider. You're looking at the, the fate of this team is really in this guy's hands. And you're seeing it with the lineup construction. You have Davis Schneider hitting a home run, winning you a game, and then you're not putting him in the next game because you like IKF's matchup better than Davis Schneider's. Don't really see the thought process there. I don't think anyone sees the thought process there. I think that's the problem with this manager is that the Blue Jays fans are starting to lose faith in him. And just looking at his response to this Astros series, I know Hazel May was asking him just a, a follow-up question about uh, this Astros loss. And he said, you don't want to say it's early because every game matters. It's not for a lack of effort. It's not for a lack of anything. These guys can hit. You don't want to make these, you don't want to make any knee-jerk reactions. These guys are professionals. And I feel like he just he shrugs off a lot of the Blue Jays' struggles. He doesn't actually hold this team accountable because he said like he uh, sort of this tweet or this statement he says you don't want to say it's early but these guys are going to be fine so he's kind of contradicting himself a little bit there because he's saying that yeah it is early but you got to wait for these guys to kind of settle into the season like they, they, it, you have the spring training to do this like you should be ready for opening day weekend you should be ready for the second series of the weekend especially against a good team in the Houston Astros and I think that's the biggest one of the biggest problems on this Toronto Blue Jays team is that there's no faith in the manager to start the right players. Even if you have good offensive production from Ernie Clement and David Schneider, they're not guaranteed to be in the lineup the next day, which is absolutely insane. They're still relying on guys like Kevin Biggio. And Matt Merritt, he hasn't been bad this year. IKF, again, hasn't been bad this year. When you're looking at offensive production and offensive upside, it's clear that Ernie Clement and David Schneider have the upper hand here. And... When uh, returning it back, this John Schneider stuff, I think he's gotten a little bit better with the pitching aspect this year. As we've seen it with Jose Barrios, we've seen it with Chris Bassett. He is letting his guys ride it out early on in the season, but that also could be to save the bullpen. That might not be a performance thing. That might be more on analytics. You need more innings from your starting pitching earlier in the season to save your bullpen from being taxed down the road. So again, it's tough to give John Schneider credit when he's just kind of brushing off some of his team's dismays and lack of production when you would like to see a little more accountability and you just want to see change. You want to see something be different. You don't want to watch the exact same team from 2023 because we all know how that ends. It's not good for the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, my, my biggest my biggest piece is, of course, this Ernie and uh, Davis problem. Um, and I don't know if it's just me. Let us know in the comments what you guys think about what I'm about to say. I would much rather watch you throw Davis in there as an everyday player and watch him struggle for the first little while, work out the woes that he's got to get through, especially, you know, facing that high fastball. He's going to have to figure that out. So I think you throw him in, you, you, you sort of, you know, throw him to the fire a little bit, but let him go through it, figure everything out. He might struggle for a couple of games, but let him work through everything. And I think by just taking him out every couple of games, you're, you're not seeing his full potential. And I think to see his full potential, he's going to have to go through it. He's going to have to go through those lows. He's going to have to go through the highs. He's, he's did it last year, but again, it was so, so broken up all season that it's tough to get a full feel. And I, so let me know if you guys would rather see Davis continue to get swap starts with IKF, or would you rather him being thrown in, say, here, you're our guy, go, we're going to back you no matter what. 
like let him work through everything. Let us know which option you guys would take because I know where I'm at. See, I'm taking at, at, him at this point. Like, yeah, I get that. David Schneider didn't, or sorry, John Schneider didn't want to throw Davis in because he can't hit the high fastball. But clearly, nobody could hit the high fastball on this team. Yeah. We had one hit all day. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter. I don't care about these matchups anymore. I don't care about the analytics, left versus right, right versus left, whatever. You're playing your best players. But just looking at, I was looking at just this Blue Jays team offensively and just how bad it's been. George Schneider, has, or, yeah, George Schneider, everyone's Schneider now. George Springer has 25 at bats with three hits. David Schneider is eight and he has two hits. And both of those hits are home runs. So, like, I, I just I don't get it. I don't get you're getting your probably your best offensive production from David Schneider compared maybe Justin Turner. Justin Turner's had a really, really good start to the season. Yeah. But one of your top three easily offensive production from this guy, and you're not playing him every day. Like it, it doesn't it just blows my mind how you're not playing the best player available when you're having one huge problem on your team when you're not scoring runs. And just I want to before we uh, head to the next segment here, I wanted to throw it back to what I was talking about yesterday. Just with uh, how the Blue Jays, it seemed like they were swinging very early in the count. They weren't watching a lot of pitches. And it seemed like they weren't making a lot of good contact, rolling over a lot. And this actually got outlined in a tweet here from uh, Avery Chenier, actually. And he went in and he found out um, how many at-bats in the first, or the three games in the Astros series were decided in three or less pitches. So in game one, 41% of the at-bats were decided in three or less pitches. In game two, 56 percent and in game three it was 35 percent for a total of 44.2 percentage of at bats being completed in three pitches or less and well that's, I'll, I'll let you uh get into your thoughts about that Brady. that's that, that those, those are great numbers if you're getting hits that's perfect jump on the early pitches i love that i love that for players when you see that you can see that fastball and you can drive it but when it's not working and it's clearly not working those numbers are horrible. Those numbers are menacing. Those numbers are going to haunt you because that means that you're not taking a second to breathe up there. Sometimes it's you, you take a pitch just to like lock back in and they're not doing that. So it's, it is, it's a give and take because if they were playing really well and we looked at those numbers and they were hitting baseballs very consistently early in the count, that's really, really good statistic. But now that we're not playing well, you look at those statistics and yeah, it's, it's a little bit haunting. Well, yeah, it's like you said, if you're getting hits in the first pitch of the at-bat, and you're a lot of the time they are going to throw you a good pitch in the first pitch of the at-bat, if you're getting hits, it's going to work perfectly. It's just the problem is clearly something isn't working, and it's been a problem for the first seven games of the season. There's no change. There's been a lack of doing anything different, and it seems like they're just kind of saying, like, oh, it is early, it's early, like uh, the old Mike, Mike Wilner saying that it's early halfway through the season. But at some point, you got to put your good players in. These games do matter, especially you got that first series against the Tampa Bay Rays. You got this next series against the New York Yankees. You saw how this was impacting the Blue Jays down the stretch last season, how bad we were against the AL East. These, all these games do matter. And we need to see change, whether that is just taking a few more pitches, whether that's settling in. And it's tough to say because these guys are professional hitters. You don't want them to, to tell them, hey, watch the first pitch when the first pitch is a meatball or right down the middle, middle, middle fastball. 95 or whatever you want to trust these guys have faith in these guys but something's got to change something's got to give clearly it hasn't been working the first seven games of the series so whether it's an approach change whether it's personnel just getting different guys in the lineup whether it's just doing something different entirely maybe uh seeing it from a different perspective i don't know what it is but the blue just need to change something and they need to change it quick because it's not getting any easier with it, us going to the new york first the new york yankees coming up yeah, you know, the, you, you nailed it. Something needs to be changed. Something needs to be put a little bit of fear into these guys. Sit IKF. It hasn't been good. Davis has been great. Put him in. Put him in. Like, let him just roll. And then if worse comes to worse, he's really not doing it for us, then okay, then you would get can make that decision to go back to him. And Ernie, put Ernie in the lineup. I want to see more of that guy. I want to see more of him. I want to see more of Davis. Let's just roll. We, You know what? We're going to get into our the Astro, or the Yankees preview coming up here and then in the third segment you guys left us a bunch of comments so we want to give you our thoughts on what you guys had to say as well just that it'd be fun it's a friday it's a little bit of a free-for-all uh yeah let's roll yankees preview coming right up today's episode is brought to you by factor meals eat stress-free this spring with factors delicious ready-to-eat meals every fresh ne- oh, every fresh never frozen meal is chef crafted 
dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like calorie, smart, keto, protein plus, vegan, veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with factors ready to eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Looking for gourmet meals? Try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter. Not sure what that is, but sounds good. Broccolini and asparagus. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminates the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat up and savor the good stuff. Tailored to your schedule, customize your weekly meals with the flexible to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. Factor is your solution for fast premium meals without the need for cooking. We are celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu uh, for our lowest carbon footprint meals. That's that's sort of cool. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB50 and use code locked on MLB50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on MLB50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while subscription is active. Today's episode is also sponsored by Prize Picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments for this time of the year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, and you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. To test your skills on Prize Picks, when you can easily turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. So, the way I am rolling with Prize Picks today is. I got to follow the Blue Jays trends, and usually I don't bet against my boys. But that is exactly what I am doing for this first game against the New York Yankees. I know we do have Marcus Stroman on the mound, so that will be an interesting dynamic for this Blue Jays team. Obviously, Marcus Stroman being an ex-Blue Jays pitcher. Saying that, though, I am going to go with a ton of unders today. I have under Varsho bases. I have under Kirk bases. I have under Springer bases. The only thing I am going to go roll with is I'm going to go over Kikuchi's strikeouts. Kikuchi is going to own Judge in this game. I'm fired up for it. If you guys want to ride with me, you can download the app Prize Picks and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. That's code Locked On MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. So, time to get into our preview of the Yankees series. Go over. Our predictions, uh, what we some stuff we want to see, and tell you guys who's starting in each of the games. Starting off tomorrow, Blue Jays, Yankees, 12.05 p.m. our time. Wherever you guys are, it might be different. We got Kikuchi Stroman, as Carter said. Saturday, April 6th, Gosman versus Schmidt. Sunday, Bowden Francis versus Gill. Should be some interesting matchups, Carter. Uh, I want to start, obviously, let's get right into... Uh, I guess today's matchup, Kikuchi, the strikeout's over. I love it because I will, to my dying breath, uh, bet on Kikuchi's strikeout overs because he is so always so underestimated in that category. Yeah, before we get into that, I just wanted to bring up your uh, your Facker Meals ad read there. Just uh, Clearly, you're not a master chef in the kitchen. That's why I uh, did have a little bit of a chuckle there when you were talking about the truffle butter. But uh Definitely uh, something I think you could take advantage of considering uh, how well you know your foods and uh, what to throw together to make uh, a good meal. Well, when am I eating? What? Uh, when? Who is eating truffle butter? Like, you'll be, you know, I throw some chicken in, maybe some beans. I'm good to go. All right. But with factor, I will take advantage because that sounds like a money deal. If I don't have to cook Carter and I can get home, throw something in, easy money, easy money. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to trust your uh, cooked meals anyway, so it's probably better that you go with Factor to begin with. But getting hey, back into... You, uh, you get salmonella one time for my cooking, and you start throwing it in my face. Okay, well, moving on, getting back into uh, this Blue jays Yankee series. Big series coming up after uh, just a stink bomb laid in that uh, Astro series. Probably should have got swept, but we will take a 1-2 series defeat at the hands of David Schneider helping us to win that one game. As for this series, uh, really the game that I'm looking at is this Kikuchi Stroman game. I think it's huge for the Toronto Blue Jays to get a bounce back win there. And hopefully uh, the Jays players are as fired up as the rest of the fans will be about Marcus Stroman. The problem is, I think 
I, I have to, might have to be fact checked on this, but I think Jano might be the only player on the Jays that was there when Strowman was playing. So I guess there's not too many rivalries going on with the team. I guess John Schneider would have been within the league and uh, with AAA, I think, at that time. But yeah, with uh, Marcus Strowman, obviously a familiar face for uh, all of Jays fans. He had a good uh, outing against the Astros, his first outing, going six scoreless innings with four hits. He gave up three runs, but they weren't earned. So I guess there was a few errors from uh, the Yankees bum infielders like uh, Anthony Volpe playing at short, probably had a million errors over there. But uh, the, I'm always excited for these Yankees series. Uh, it's it's always the the rivalry dynamics always there, especially when you have guys like Stroman, you have uh, Gosman pitching the series going into Connor Schmidt. Uh, it would have been nice if Alec Manoa was alive. I mean, I do actually have an update on that. I guess uh, I'll get into that now that I'm talking about him. I'm not sure if we'll bring him up uh, later in this podcast. But Alec Manoa's sim game yesterday apparently went well. He threw 48 pitches, had six strikeouts, and the velo and command were good. So the next step for him is to pitch four innings in low A Dunedin. Good thing they're taking it slow with him. It's finally nice to get an update on Alec Manoa. But back to this New York Yankee series, we just got to hit the baseball. That's that's clearly the problem here. You're not going to win scoring uh, two runs in three games. Uh, Kikuchi, your pitching's going to be fine here, honestly. You have Bowden Francis. I'm not as worried about him as some other people might be after that first start. You got your ace against Clark Schmidt. That should be a win. God forbid. Hopefully we can actually score some runs. That's exactly what it's going to come down to in this series. It's just, can the Blue Jays score more than two runs over three games? You don't have to face Nestor. You don't have to face Garrett Cole because he's injured. These pitching matchups are, they are still pretty good pitchers. I think Luis Jill is the only one that I'm not too, too familiar with. Is it Jill? I wasn't sure. I'm pretty Gil? sure it's Jill, yeah. Because, Gil? yeah, I mean, a guy that's probably not going to be in that rotation if uh, they have all their starters there. That's a game we got to take advantage of. Um, I think uh, we'll just get into our series predictions right now, Braden. Unless uh, you want to add anything about this Yankee series. Do you have any uh, key moments or key strategies the Blue Jays should, should incorporate for this no, series? No, it's it's get the bats rolling. That's it. The, the pitching is going to be fine. We know that. I did have a little thing on Alec Manoa. To be honest with you, I don't care one single iota if he had a good game in the sim thing. All right. <laughs> it's like my simulator golf round where I shoot yeah. 78 in perfect conditions. Like, who really cares, right? Y- yeah. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about here? There's no, the sun ain't beating down on you. You know, the you weather's the not fans. wearing you. That's you right. Got Aaron Judge staring you into the eyes, you know, in the batter's box. It's, it's a completely different feel. And that's, I, I agree with that take. I think these sim games are ridiculous. If you're not pitching against actual players, and uh, actually getting out there and feeling the actual experience, what's really the point? You you might as well go and just throw in the bullpen with – take a catcher and go throw in the bullpen. It's There's no difference to me at Maybe all. Maybe I'll like, go in there. They can, they can throw against me. Maybe I'll uh, – he can have six strikeouts against me. That's a pretty good feed, actually, for him. So if he could even get two, I think he'd be pretty well, happy Well, you just have to keep, like, a helmet on or something because you'd probably get plunked. Yeah, I'll be wearing full body armor against yeah. Alec Manoa, going probably like one for 10 if I'm lucky, but with like five hit by pitches. So I yeah, mean. yeah, yeah. The the uh, at-bats versus plate appearances would be a good stat for you. Uh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, um, Braden, what do you have your uh, series predictions being for this uh, Yankee series? Yeah, so to be honest with you, I, I don't know if it's going to be a bounce back. I think Stroh Show is going to put on a show um and it's going to be a good outing for him. And I don't know, coming off of a pretty devastating loss, I don't know if the Jays bounce back so I have them actually losing game one and for the life of me I will almost never predict a Blue Jays losing a series because I just don't want that to happen so I have them winning the next two and it's just going to come down to I think um not maybe not your most their most experienced pitchers on the mound hopefully the guys can start to rebound and bounce back and take advantage of that situation for me, I'm going to be on the negative train for the first time on this podcast. I have the Blue Jays losing the series, and it's based off of them showing me absolutely nothing in the Astro series. I think it's kind of foolish for me to think that something's going to change when they have shown me absolutely nothing to make changes and start to change the direction of this team. So, unfortunately, we're just looking at like this matchup on paper. you got to have Stroman over Kikuchi, unfortunately. I love Kikuchi, but Stroman is the better pitcher. And just uh, his experience going six innings against the Astros, good lineup. I have the Yankees taking this game as well because the Blue Jays simply just cannot hit again. They don't figure it out. And I think they're going to lose the first game here. Clark Schmidt versus Kevin Gosman. What a mismatch this is. Clark Schmidt, not a horrible pitcher, but you have Kevin Gosman, one of the best American League pitchers in this game. Hopefully going to have him ramped up to 80, 90 pitches. This is the game that the Toronto Blue Jays win. 
I got to rely on Kevin Gosman. He probably squeak out a 3-2 win based off of this offense. But Kevin Gosman is going to give you uh, some innings, going to give you a strong performance, a quality start, give you a good chance to win. Mountain Francis versus Luis Gill. This one for me is very 50-50 because I do think we have the pitching matchup here. It's just, you know. Is it good enough? It's Luis Gill. And it's when you don't know a pitcher that well on the other team, that's usually when they absolutely carve the Toronto Blue Jays. So I think that's why I'm going to go with an L here. Unfortunately, I think they're going to lose two to one to the New York Yankees. They're maybe figuring out a little bit in that Luis Gill game. I think those first two games, they're still going to struggle unless John Schneider actually puts Ernie Clement and David Schneider in the lineup. But I just wanted to go over before we head into this final segment, our previous picks of the last couple series. So in that Astro series, I actually went over three. I didn't get or over four. I didn't even get the series right. I picked um, Chris Bassett. I had a win there. It didn't end up happening. I had a Jose Barrios win where he got – or did I have a loss, I think, because he got the win. And then the game before that, I lost. I think from that race series, we were tied. I think uh, we had the, the – no, we did, we were not tied. I actually have to get the stats on this. I'll uh, we'll, we'll bring that we'll, up in the third segment. <laughs> I'll yeah. actually have it figured out instead of going yeah. off of memory. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, for the Yankees – uh, I have them 1-2. You have them 2-1. You're going the more optimistic route. We just got to see something different here. We got to see, like, three hits maybe instead of instead of one. You know, that would be nice. Uh, just get these guys in the lineup. It's going to be a long weekend if we're not getting a lot of offensive hits. Braden, do you got uh, anything else to add about this safety series? No, that's – I mean, it's exactly it. So, uh, tomorrow, I get off work early. Just – I should catch most of the game tomorrow. I'm going to be pretty – pumped up about that and just to hopefully to see a bounce back if that game goes poorly it's gonna be a rough night for for me uh then saturday wake up uh working again uh i'll try to throw i'm probably just gonna throw the game on at work on another monitor um and watch that and then sunday you know it's i'm gonna be hurting a little bit we got a social to go to and i'm just hoping that you know i won't feel even worse because of a blue jays loss so let's just pray for that yeah, coming up, we'll just have a little bit more Blue Jays talk, some storylines, maybe some news we didn't cover. We'll get into all that right after this. Today's episode is sponsored by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a $3 match. That's right, no cap on the $3 match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. All right, third segment, we got some information for you guys and uh, and a couple of your guys' comments too that you know we thought we'd read out on this episode, just see what your guys' takes are and if we agree with them. Carter, I'm going to send it to you for a quick some quick information. Yeah, just before that, I actually figured out this uh, our series predictions here. So in that first series, me and Braden both had an opening day win. We got that right and ended up missing two of the other games. We ended up having the third game or that fourth game as a win. So we both got two points in that series. He had Kikuchi winning that start, I believe. No, I had Kikuchi winning the start, and he had Bassett winning the start. Didn't end up happening, so it's 2-2 after that series. And then in this Astro series, I lost every single one because I had Bowden and Bassett winning, where we only got a Brios win. I had them winning 2-1, so I don't get that point either. Where with Braden, Braden had uh, Barrios winning, and then he also had Bassett winning. I think he had Bowden losing, so got that right, got the Brios right missed on Bassett and missed on the series prediction. So in totality, Braden is up four to two on the Blue Jays series predictions, but I just wanted to get into one thing that the New York Yankees wanted, might want to take advantage of if the Toronto Blue Jays continue their woes and do not decide to switch up anything that they're doing. So obviously I went over how this series for the Blue Jays was one of the worst series offensively they've had, honestly, in the construction of the Toronto Blue Jays. The Toronto Blue Jays were a franchise until the 1970s, and they haven't had a worse offensive game since 1975. So if that doesn't say how bad the series was. Uh, I'm clearly you're uh, misreading, mishearing the stat that I'm telling you. So here is the uh, the changeup numbers for this uh, Houston series. So Blanco threw the changeup 34% of the time. Framer Valdez threw it 25% of the time, and Christian Javier 
through it 33% of the time. So these changeup numbers, usually you're not getting a pitcher throwing a changeup over 30% of the time. Usually they're just mixing it in. Be lucky if you're throwing it 20% of the time. Clearly the Astros saw something at the Toronto Blue, against the Toronto Blue Jays lineup. Clearly they were not hitting the changeup well, and that's why we were getting all this weak content, just rolling over changeups constantly, it seemed like, in that Blanco series. Like, especially the game one and three, where it's 34 and 33% of the time. That's a third of the time they were throwing changeups. So if the Yankees realize this and the Toronto Blue Jays don't make the adjustments to the changeup, the Yankees should just go out there and throw changeups 75% of the time. Clearly the Toronto Blue Jays aren't adjusting. They're not figuring it out. So in this series, the Toronto Blue Jays are going to have to switch up their approach like I've been advocating, or we're not going to see a lot of success for this upcoming season. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. It has to. You have to. You have to look at what you did wrong, and I think that's part of it, right? You got you to gotta understand where your shortcomings were in the game, and that was, I mean, obviously one of them. Uh, but there was plenty more as well. So who knows? We'll see what they fix. A couple quick bits of information for you guys. Um, just in the entire MLB, the Oakland Athletics will now play in West Sacramento for the 2025 to 2027 seasons ahead of their move to Las Vegas in 2028. The team had just announced that. I think it was either this morning or last night. Yeah, I, um, I saw that this morning. So yeah. it was around there. So just interesting little bit. Um, we knew that they probably weren't going to go straight to LA just with how, or with, uh, sorry, Las Vegas, uh, just the way everything was sort of going. Um, so it's cool, cool to see where they're going to. I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make uh, in whatever, but whatever. It, it, it's that sort of middle ground of the move. So sort of, sort of is I have something I found interesting, at least. Uh, I wanted to get into some of your guys' comments as well from yesterday's videos. You guys were pissed as well, to say the least. Uh, yeah, uh, we had a couple comments saying Moreno, Lourdes, Teoscar, uh, Guriel will all be missed, obviously. And there, it's, it's, there was some better or different words, I'll say, but that's where I'll leave that. Yeah, I mean, I would use a lot of different words to describe this Toronto Blue Jays team if I could as well. And we definitely do that off camera. But it it's definitely sucks when you're seeing what Dalton Varsho's doing and you're seeing Lourdes Gurriel rake at the start of the season. You're seeing Teoscar Hernandez rake at the start of the season. If we had one of those two at, or those two batters in this lineup, things could be looking real good with this uh, this pitching staff. But again, it, I, I'm getting close to saying this trade uh, was an L for the Toronto Blue Jays. I think I'm going to wait till halfway through the season, though. Uh, I, but to say the least, yes, Teoscar and Lourdes would definitely be appreciated in this lineup and be more than willing to sacrifice some defense for their bats. Yeah, uh, a couple people said there's nothing to ex be excited about. This season's over. I'm scrapping it already. Uh, for me, obviously, that's not going to happen because I will watch Jays games even if they're 0 and 100, you know, 62. So, but at the end of the day, I totally understand why people are upset. And we get a lot of those comments being really upset. Uh, a bunch of people calling for at uh, you know Atkins head and maybe John Schneider as well. Yeah, that's something we're gonna have to look into as the season goes on. If this is another unsuccessful season, that might be a more real conversation we're gonna have to have on this podcast. Yeah, and and then a couple people were saying uh, if you think the Astros were difficult, well, how about the team that just swept the Astros? Literally, yeah, it doesn't get any easier. Just uh, completely blew out the Astros, and look who we got. You, New York Yankees, especially if we get swept by them, we're going to be hearing it from Yankees, Twitter, TikTok, all that fan base. We already know what Yankees fans are. But, I mean, I'm, they're in a lot better position than we are. 6-1 and one compared to 3-4 and four going over a sweep there. They beat the D-backs as well. Nothing to scoff at for them. They're looking like a good team as well, like we predicted in our uh, standings predictions at the start of the season. The last one I wanted to bring up was something that we touched on earlier in this episode. Lucky Jay's management doesn't seem to be concerned. Always try to put a positive spin on a negative situation, which 100%, that's what they've been doing. John Schneider has been out there in the media saying that exact same stuff. So to me, that's just more frustrating than anything. I'd rather you be upset and show some emotion, which we talked about a ton is emotion on this team. If you're pissed, show that you're pissed, right? Like I want to see you get involved, get in, be engaged, not brush everything off. Yeah, see, I don't want to get into, like, conspiracy theories and stuff here, but you think that the, the Blue Jays' management and media are just telling John Schneider kind of what to say in these situations? And uh, do you think he actually believes this kind of stuff? But I don't know. I'm, I'm not in the dugout. I'm not actually in Toronto, unfortunately. I would love to be there, hopefully, at some point. This podcast does give us the ability to be in the media room and actually give us the opportunity to ask John Schneider some questions because, man, would I like to pick his brain about some of the decisions he has made. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we're, we're moving there. We're getting there. We'll be there soon enough. 
Um, we want to thank you guys for watching, listening, however you're viewing us. Make sure you drop a sub if you're on YouTube. Follow us on all of our social media channels, Braden Five Wasco, Carter First Two on X or Twitter, Locked On Blue Jays on TikTok and Instagram. And yeah, have a great weekend. We'll be back Monday to either complain or to be really pumped that we just destroyed the Yankees. And just before we do head out, I want to throw it over to our Locked On 24-7 streaming channel, March Madness, NHL, all these sports going on. Perfect opportunity to take advantage of our experts analyzing all these sports, the games, breaking down games, analyzing storylines, stuff like that. So if you want to head over, if you're a sports fan of not just the MLB, but sports in general, head over to the Locked On Sports Today channel on YouTube and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Have a safe weekend. And hopefully we can get some more runs from this Toronto Blue Jays offense. We will see you guys on Monday.